Today we're coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains. Hi everyone, welcome back to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect, the show where we learn about cool critters and the awesome technology that conservationists use to study and protect America's wildlife and wild places. Today I'm your host, Chelsea McKinney, and we are at Canaan Valley National Wildlife Refuge on Cabin Mountain, West Virginia. The refuge is home to black bears, flying squirrels, barred owls, and the Cheat Mountain Salamander, a threatened species found only here in this very habitat. To tell us more about the salamander, we have Don Washington, Supervisory Biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Don, thank you so much for having us at this refuge today. Chelsea, thanks for coming. We really appreciate you guys coming here. Now, I'm wondering, how did you get interested in a career in conservation? I've really always wanted to be in the outdoors from the time I was really little. So I really knew at a young age what I wanted to do. I really love the outdoors and with the Fish and Wildlife Service, I had an opportunity to work with them a couple summers um, while I was in college and I was hooked. The Cheat Mountain Salamander is an amphibian. An amphibian means that it has permeable skin. So it can absorb things from the environment into a skin. Cheat Mountain Salamander in particular is lungless, so it has no lungs, it has to breathe through its skin. Don, why is the salamander a threatened species and what exactly does threatened mean? Cheat Mountain Salamander is listed as threatened with the federal government because it's at risk of becoming endangered. Um, and after endangered would be extinction. We're lucky that it's only at the threatened status right now. We've lost a lot of habitat for the Cheat Mountain Salamander. There are a lot of different reasons. Um, and we went from about a million acres of red spruce habitat in the state of West Virginia down to 50,000. Wow. And we still have a lot of threats to this um, habitat right now that we're trying to uh, battle. And uh, we're hoping that through a lot of the management that we're doing on the refuge and other places that we can bring that red spruce habitat back. I'm wondering what device do you have in your hand and how does that help go about studying and protecting the salamander? This is a GPS unit, Global Positioning System. So it is pretty high tech. It can tell us where we are on the ground right now. So we use this to mark the actual specific locations of every cheat mountain salamander that we find, but also going to locations where uh, we might ne never have seen any and finding them there and we can mark those locations so we can keep track of the population a little bit better. So my guess is you have some locations of where cheap mountain salamanders might be. Yes. Do you mind if we uh, take a look and see if we can find one this evening? Sure can. Awesome. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Joining us on the salamander hunt were Don's two kids, Savannah and Brickell. So we're looking for this spruce okay. that we're in right now. Yep. Um, but we like to get down on the ground and look under rocks and down woody debris, which is dead pieces of, of tree okay. or sticks that fell off trees. Um, some of the habitat like this is really good. Oh yeah. When things start to decay, um, it, it's some of the best places to look and you can lift up. Should we try to lift this up? Yeah. Okay. Let's like roll it toward us. Okay. All right. Oh, look at this guy. See how moist and wet it is in there? There's lots of insects in there. Um, they're really good hunters. So um, they'll, they'll go on, on underneath all this stuff and, and look for their prey. And, but they also stay under there to stay wet. Though we didn't find any salamanders under this log, we did find one in another area. Don's son, Brickell, took notes while Don marked this location on her GPS unit. Savannah checked a field guide to learn more about the Cheat Mountain Salamander. As the sun set on Canaan Valley, 
it was time to leave this fascinating spruce forest. What can we do and the students watching us do to help protect the Cheat Mountain Salamander? There's some important things that you as students can do to help the Cheat Mountain Salamander. Um, there are really simple things you can do around your house. Turn the lights off, so reducing electricity use, uh, recycling, but also thinking about the trips that you take to town and combining your trips so you're using less gas and have less of a um, you know, pollution coming out of your vehicle, which in turn is going to help our earth from getting warmer. We're seeing this trend of, of, of our earth getting warmer, mm -hmm. and that can have a big impact on Cheat Mountain Salamanders because the place where they live, like I said, we're high elevation. It's really cool up here, but as things get warmer, it's going to get warmer up here too. And so that could really impact where and how much habitat they have. Don, thank you so much for teaching us about the ecology and the importance of the Cheat Mountain Salamander. You know, any of you can become a biologist by getting outside, observing the nature around you. You can volunteer at your local National Wildlife Refuge, and I'll bet there's one not too far from your home. Join us next time on the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's Conservation Connect.